Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This is a wig for some of you who are wondering and the reason I am wearing a wig today is because it is my 26th birthday. I celebrate my birthday today on the 26th of April. It is my crown birthday and before the whole COVID-19 pandemic I had planned a trip to Mpumalanga so that I could really relish my crown birthday the way I think thought would be the best way. Sometimes things don't happen as planned so here I am at home but I'm not complaining because I obviously spend it with my family and I have a roof over my head and I'm very very blessed for the people who have sent me all the messages and I'm very thankful. But let me not babble away, let's get right to it. So in this video I'm going to give you 26 tips on natural hair. So these tips are pretty much what has worked for me personally and maybe they can work for you. So tip number one, wash your brushes and combs. It is so important to do so because when you have clean hair and you're using brushes that still have dirt and grime from weeks, it really inhibits the health of your hair. It doesn't help keeping it clean. Wash your brushes guys. Number two, never style your hair when it's dry. A spray bottle with water really goes a long way. So if you're thinking of styling your hair and it's dry, a few spritz just to make it a little bit damp really does do the trick. It also does hydrate your hair so that when you are styling it, it's not dry, it's not it doesn't become brittle and it doesn't also break easily. No styling dry hair. Number three, don't forget to trim. Having split ends does create a lot of breakage so you want to eliminate that completely. Your hair will then grow the inches or the length that it needs to without any breakage. I try to do it once every three to four months if I can but obviously it also depends on what your aim for your natural hair regimen is. Number four, deep condition. Deep conditioning is so important in moisturizing your hair, replenishes all the moisture, or the nutrients that your hair really needs. Whatever your routine is, deep conditioning is important. Protect your hair while sleeping. A satin bonnet, satin scarf, a pillowcase, whatever you're doing, just wrap it up. Uh, you don't necessarily need to braid your hair every night. It's away from anything that is gonna cause friction, which can cause breakage. That brings me to my next one, number six, minimize manipulation. Having very curly and coily hair can cause a lot of knots and obviously we want to get away from that. Knots creates breakage obviously, so the more you comb your hair, the more breakage you'll get. Shedding is a normal thing. Everybody sheds hair. So the difference between shedding and breakage is that shedding comes from the root. Breakage is literally breaking from a certain part of your hair shaft. So we all experience shedding, shedding is normal, but we don't want to accelerate the shedding process by continuously combing our hair every day and braiding. We don't want very tight braids where it's pulling on our hairline or it's pulling on the roots of our hair. Minimize manipulation. Finger detangling actually does go a long way, especially when you are washing your hair. Try to finger detangle a lot more when you're washing your hair and then when you come out to style, then you can use your detangling brush, detangling comb, finger detangle is really good. We want, we want to do protective styles because it does help us retain length, lowers manipulation. Number nine, don't leave your protective styles for too long. I know this firsthand and I'm going to upload a video really soon on my recent experience with my protective style that I left on way too long. We do experience shedding while we have our protective styles. Number 10, follow a method LOC liquid oil cream or LCO it's liquid cream oil I follow the LCO the oil does seal in the moisture so I apply the liquid which is the water whether it be damp hair from just coming from a hair wash or spritzing it up the cream I obviously use my dark and lovely or natural hair butter and seal it in with Jamaican castor oil, coconut oil, olive oil, any oil that you use, that is the method I follow. Number 11. Number 11, I'm even with you, 26. My dear. I know. Number 11, don't compare your hair growth. That is one of the worst things you can ever do. Only because you want your hair to look like someone else's hair and you'll end up doing things you don't want to do to your hair. So just Follow your hair routine, worry about your hair routine. Yes, you can 
look for tips and see other styles and get creative just for inspiration even but do not compare your hair growth number 12 scrubbing your scalp use the pads of your fingers never your nails the pads of your fingers do an exceptional job when you're rubbing your scalp it does what it needs to your nails scratch your scalp sometimes it can even cause wounds um, scratches and that is not pleasant when you're washing your hair with shampoo it burns so pads of your fingers yes fingernails no clarify clarify your scalp Clarify your scalp at least once a month. It is so important that we clarify our scalp because from using so many products, we normally get product buildup on our scalp and that inhibits our hair growth. So our hair doesn't grow the way it's supposed to. There are lots of clarifying shampoos out in the stores. I personally use apple cider vinegar mixed with water before my wash, which really does the trick. There's clay clarifying shampoo, so there's a lot of options you can Turn to 14. A tip that I like to do is adding essential oils into my shampoo and my conditioner and my spray bottle. So I will either put a bit of Jamaican black castor oil in my conditioner or in my spray bottle. Um, essential oils I love using particularly in my spray bottle is some castor oil, lang lang oil, tea tree oil and vitamin E oil. I will explain that in a different video. Um, Pretty much what they all do so I'm just trying to speed through this tip number 15 try not to always style your hair with tight ponies or updos listen I am not perfect so I am a um, culprit of that you can leave it loose there are so many styles that you can do without having to tie up your hair all the time I love my slick buns and I love my slick updos so I need to stop too 16 I apply castor oil to my hairline sometimes uh, in the morning or at night before I go to bed. This really helps my hairline to be stronger. Um, it does help with people who do have receding hairlines. Um, just apply it uh, every three days, every four days and it should do the trick. Have a regiment or routine. It is so important to follow one especially because it will be so much easier to track your progress to understand how your hair is to know when you need to clarify when you need a wash when you need a condition it makes life so much easier i am human i do fall off my routine often but i do try my best to get back on track it does help a long way 18 try stick to wide tooth combs instead of the smaller tooth combs only because when you're combing your hair Kinks and curls always tend to knot up, so with a white tooth comb, it will really alleviate the pulling and the tugging from your scalp, and that is what you don't need. So make sure your white tooth comb is your best friend. 19, try to stick to products that don't have sulfates or parabens. These are the chemicals that you really don't need in your hair. I'll go in more detail next time. I personally love using Auntie Jackie's range because it clearly states that there's no sulfates and no parabens, which is exactly what you need. None of that stuff. Number 20, protein treatments. Protein treatments are amazing. Be careful of protein hair breakage. So that is when you put too much protein in your hair, your hair becomes very brittle it literally starts breaking off because of the abnormal amount of protein it has on your hair strands sometimes even by um, grabbing a few strands of your hair and scrunching it together you can hear very hard scrunching of it from protein breakage protein treatments good not too much number 21 washing your hair with hot water isn't isn't very good for your hair what I love to do is I start washing my hair with lukewarm water and as I gradually go towards the end of my wash I, the water gets colder and colder only because cold water closes the pores so once you have washed your hair conditioned your hair you want your hair to retain that moisture that you had you'll be able to absorb the product so much better Number 22, familiarize yourself with the different shampoos and conditioners. I know it can be overwhelming. Even me, when I step into the shop, it's just a whole shelf of goodness. But try and make sure you know what you're going for. Know that if your hair is very dry hair, very oily hair, 
There are different types of shampoos for that. There's clarifying shampoos, there's moisturizing shampoos, there's clarifying conditioners, moisturizing conditioners. So it is important that you do know what you are getting. An example is when I know I need to clarify my hair, my conditioner, make sure that I get a conditioner that will bring in all that moisture back to my hair that it needs. Number 23, try use minimal heat as possible. I know it's impossible not to use heat. I uh, recently used heat about a couple of months ago at the end of last year that's when it was the last time i used heat and it was even medium heat and i blew down my, i blowed i blowed dried my hair um as much as we love straight hair sometimes it is important that if we want to maintain the health of our hair heat try stay away from heat as much as possible there are different ways you can stretch your hair whether it's braiding your hair after wash if you do decide to use heat, uh, what I've used is this Heat Defense by Tresemme. It's come very handy, especially before I blow dry. 24. Know your hair texture and porosity. It is so important that we know that because that way you'll understand your hair so much better. Hair texture, we all know it ranges from 4A, B, C to 3A, B, C to 2A, B, C. The 4 spectrum, we know it's for the more darker girls just like myself. I know that I am 4C, but sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes I really feel like my hair can go further into the spectrum, whether it be 4D, 5A, 5B, whatever. But I am a 4C gal. Um, the 3 spectrum is more for the uh, mixed girls. And then the two spectrum is a lot fairer skin girls. Also remember that jeans does play an important role, which you'll find darker skin girls in the three three spectrum, which is totally okay. Our hairs are all different, we're all different. So the main thing is just to understand or know your hair texture. Porosity is pretty much the rate in which your hair strand can absorb the moisture. High porosity hair means that your hair can absorb oils and moisture so quickly but the downside of that is the rate that it can quickly absorb is a rate it can quickly lose. So for high porosity hair you need to make sure that you obviously don't put too much but also understand that if you put very little it will lose the the moisture very quickly so sealing in the moisture is really important uh, medium porosity medium absorption what us natural women would prefer is the medium porosity and then low porosity is pretty much your hair doesn't absorb moisture and oils as quickly as it should but at the same time it doesn't lose it as quick as it should which is good so with low porosity hair you obviously want to open the pores as well make sure you get all that moisture in and then seal it in so that it does stay so this leads me into the next one number 25 what also helps is heating up oils um, sometimes when you feel like your hair does not absorb the oils and moisture it's supposed to when you heat up the oils applying warm oil into your hair will help absorb it so much easier and that way you know that your hair is taking in the nutrients that it needs so heating up oils is good and finally is what i preach all the time to everybody love your kinks and curls we all are different we all have different genes we all come from different backgrounds so our hair won't behave the same it may be similar but there will be instances where you'll try something and it just won't work and that's okay so and that is the beauty of knowing and learning how your hair works what hair type you are um, because at the end of the day if you love the hair you're in you'll feel a lot more confident in stepping out and embracing it it will make your natural hair journey also that much easier when you in love with it and when you take in every stage you feel your hair is going into whether it be having a TWA or whether you have a huge afro really love the hair you're in those are my 26 tips on my 26th birthday on the 26th of April I did this specifically because it's my crown birthday obviously with a lot planned couldn't do it but nonetheless we make the most of what we have and I am pretty blessed with what I have. So thank you for watching. I'm sorry if I rambled through it. I know um, watching long videos really can be 
daunting so I really wanted to make it quick and short and to the point. Enjoy the rest of your evening and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. And happy birthday to me! Thanks guys! Bye!